Well, hello, old man cavers. What are we doing today? Flat and polish with this equipment. Roll the credits. Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. So, man cavers, I was wrong. It seems some of you folks do like the painting videos. So, I'm going to do a typical painting video and say, God, oh, there's the bonnet I done on the Astra. Don't that look good? Yeah. Let's get it back to the customer. Wrong. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you a video that not very many people ever show. They sort of, six feet back, don't that look good? Oh, it does look good from six feet back, till you get closer. Now, let me show you if I can find some. See that? See that? See that? Now then, they are little bits of dust and crap that's got in your paint. Now then. Don't you kid yourself by thinking that when you have something done in a paint shop, it goes in the booth, they spray it, and you get it back. No, wrong. Nine out of ten times, it's flattered and polished. No body shop ever admits it. And, yeah, because every painter or everyone wants you to think that the finish you get is the finish out of the gun. This is the finish you get out of the gun, which, yeah, is good. It's good. It looks nice. But it's not nice enough for me. When it comes to paintwork, I'm a little bit fussy with my paintwork. So this is not good enough to go back to the customer. Fast improvement on what it was. Still got a nice shine. But them little bits of crap and poo in it, I don't like it. So using this vast array of equipment, we're going to flatten and polish this bonnet. And I'm going to show you how to do it. We have 1,500 grit paper, 2,000 grit paper, a rub and down block, some G3 Premium from Farcella, a big rotary mop, and my dual action with a mop head, and a bucket of hot soapy water. Now then, a lot of you are probably going to cringe if you don't know anything about paintwork. You're probably going to be like, oh my God, he's ruining that bonnet. But... Hold you near. We are not ruining the bonnet one little bit. So, uh, we get our hot soapy water. We get a cloth that goes in the hot soapy water. I'll show you what that's for in a minute. We get some 1500 grit paper here. Fold it in half. Tear it down the middle. You then fold it in the thirds. So we'll go roughly in half again. And then fold it over again. So you're left with a nice little square of paper, like so. That will then fit nicely on your sanding block. You're going to be like, he's going to sand that bonnet? Well, yes, he is going to sand this bonnet. So, move our extension lead out of the way so we don't electrify ourselves. And with our hot soapy water, we just want to rinse this bonnet off to make sure any dust has gone off it. I've left it masked up, and you'll see why in a little while. There. So here's our paper. No need to soak it. Some people say leave it in the water for 10 minutes. No. Swill it about in your hot water. Get sanding. Say so this is 1500 grit. This could take a while. And if you can't hear it sanding, you know you're doing it right. Because if you get a bit of grit under there, you'll hear it. It'll make a horrible little screechy noise. And you'll be like, oh dear, what's that? Uh, 
I've got the overalls on because this is not the cleanest of jobs. There. We're going to sand this down all over. Obviously on curved edges like this, they are a job to block, so we will have to do them by hand. But you're getting the gist of what's going on here. And don't sand in your swage lines. Because they are always a job. And swage lines are your biggest risk of breaking through. And the last thing you want to do is break through. Anyhow, I'm probably going to forward through this because it's going to take me about an hour. So you flat this barn up with 1500, then 2000. So I'll probably stop the video here. I'm sure you guys don't want to watch me do this for a whole hour. Yeah, so I'm going to stop the video here. Let me just do along this back edge, show you how to do it by hand. Three fingers and go on a sideways motion like so back on our block yeah. It's hard to see, but there were some little bits of rubbish in here. And the sun is coming out. Great, this has got to be fun to polish, isn't it? I was hoping the sun was going to stay behind the clouds today. Let me just give you a little idea of what we're going to be left with. Right, we've kind of scraped that off a bit so that bonnet will now start to dry. And we're going to be left with like this, a matte finish underneath. And when we've got a matte finish, we'll know we're right. Look at this bit here, look. Let me just dry this bit. There. Let me see if I can get you in to see that. See here? Come on, dry off. Right there. You can see a little bit of mist look. It's still a bit shiny. See them three little bits of poo in there? So we need to flat this until this whole bonnet is matte like this. So I'm going to turn this video off because you're not going to want to see it all like I said. It's going to take me quite a while. And once I've flat it all down, we'll be back. Right man cavers, we have been over our bonnet with the 1500 and the 2000. So underneath this water, it's all nice and matte now. Now the next thing we're going to do, a stage I forgot about, was we put one of these discs in there, DA, that's a 2000 grit, and this is for flattening and polishing. So we'll stick him on, and we'll now go over the bonnet wet with this. Bear in mind, keep it wet. So our bonnet's nice and wet. There we go. There we go. Just so 
What is this process actually called? Well, if you watch the American Hot Rod programs, Gas Monkey, or whatever, you'll notice they'll refer to this as color sanding. Some people call it color sanding, some people call it flattening and polishing. All the same thing. It's basically doing this to your fresh paint. So we need to get a clean cloth and dry our bonnet off and then you'll see what we're left with. So here I've got a nice dry clean cloth. We'll just dry this bonnet off. And then you'll see what we're left with once that's dry. And that'll also tell us if there's any little bits of muck still left in it that I've missed. I don't think there is though. I think we've pretty much got it. Anyhow, thank you guys for uh, encouraging me to record more paint spraying videos. I know what it was is a few months ago, somebody actually messaged me and said, we subscribe to your channel to look at you fix engines, not paint cars. And I think I took that to heart a little and I was like, am I losing views? Am I losing subscribers here? Because I'm not sort of sticking to what I normally do by including these car videos. So that's half the reason I was a bit reluctant to post all these spraying videos. But if you, if you guys do like to see them, say please comment below. Most, a lot of you have already. And said, yes, you like to see it. All right, there we go. Now that looks scary because that bonnet has now got no shine. You can see where I haven't done in these edges. Do not go in there with your wet sanding. Do not go right up to the edge. Same again, I've left this bit here of wet sanding. But you don't want to hand around the front. Because there are bits that are really, really prone to going through with the mop. Same with your corners, look, leave them. Just do the bulk of the area. And as you can see, there is no little bits of crap in that anymore. All the crap has gone. Now this looks scary. I remember 20 years ago when I started painting. I painted a bonnet here for my dad. And after I painted it the next day, I did this to it. Flattened it down. And he came out and he said... You ruined that bonnet, what have you done? I said, I'm flattening and polishing. And Dad never thought this bonnet would polish back up. He's like, well, you ruined that. You'll have to paint that again. But no. There we go. So, let me move you around here. Which side am I going to do first? I'm going to start on this side. So now we want our rotary mop. 
Now the root remark is this one. <laughs> oh, pardon me. These are a bit like a nine inch grinder. Big, heavy things. And they just spin in a rotary fashion. Yeah? They don't oscillate. The other polisher oscillates like a DA does. This is just a rotary. These things are dangerous. If you don't know what you're doing, if you do get yourself one of these, please, please practice on an old car or something you're not fussy about. Because when these things get going, they pull. If you hold them flat like that, they'll snatch you about and they'll pull you about the bonnet everywhere. You've got to keep these slightly to one side so it's pulling away from you. And once you get the balance right, you'll hear it. It's perfect. That mop head is full of dust. Maybe let's clean the mop head out. There we go. We'll clean the mop head out. So let me get all that old dust off there again. There we go. Now then, to do your polishing, you pretty much want to get your, get your compound. Like I say, this is G3 Advanced, which I find the best stuff. Put a big old blob on there. There you go. Now with this stuff, a little goes a damn long way. So I would say there's nearly enough on there. Well, there is enough on there to do half the bonnet. Get your water. Wet your bonnet again. And then just rub this stuff over the bonnet. Like so. Now a lot of people, some people will put it straight on the rag. Some people won't. I just do it this way because I get on better with it. Some put it direct on the mop head. Whatever. The result all comes out pretty much the same. There we go. So just spread that out. On your bonnet. Sprinkle some water on. Dry your hands, obviously, because you're going to be using an electric mop. You can wet your mop head. I tend not to bother because I keep my panel wet. There we go. You'll see why I keep the car masked up now, look. Because well, this is a messy, messy job. And you'll see why I've got the overalls on. Look. We've caught the edge of the bonnet, look. Took a chunk out of the mop head. So easily done. So I need to go get a new one. See that? If you catch it wrong, these are sketchy things to use. So we've got a new mop head. Here we go again. And this will take quite a while again. So if you guys are wondering why these sprays are expensive, this is it. Just putting the paint on and the preparation, it's what you have to do after you've done the paint. So if you get a cheap respray, the likely it is, this might not be done till afterwards. This job is very labour intensive.
Next stage really is the final polish and some G10. But I'll show you what that comes up like just with the G3. So we can just get a cloth now and just wipe this bonnet down. And you'll see, there you go. There. There we go. So can you see now the difference? Look how crisp the reflections are. You can see the detail in the trees. That is a machine polished finish. Looks so much better. You can even see the reflection of the clouds in there, look. Yeah. That's a machine polished finish. So that's what we're after over the whole bonnet. And this isn't done yet. I've got to go over this with a durable hand glaze and the little yellow mop yet with a eggshell head. We have more to do on this. This is just with the coarse stuff. But all the muck and stuff's gone out of it. The orange peel, we had a little bit of orange peel, that's all gone. This is dead flat, dead smooth, and looking lovely. So there. Right. I am going to end this video now. Or do you want to watch me just do this other side as well? Do you? Ah, uh, all right. All right. I'm always scared of posting videos that are way too long, but... Someone said if I posted a two-hour video, they'd watch it. I don't know about that. That's a long time to be watching an old Norfolk boy. But that half's done. This half isn't. Oh, well, let's get on then. If you want to see me do this side as well, who am I to say no? If you don't want to watch me do this side, you can end the video, can't you? And just say, oh, I've had enough of that Norfolk bloke doing all that. We don't want to see him do all that. That's boring. Yeah. So again, wet our bonnet. There is a bit of compound sprayed over here, so... Not critical. There we go. Right, let's get our whole wipe off now and see what we're like. See if we're ready for the final polish. We're pretty damn good. Whoops, a daisy wheel. How I snagged up on the bonnet catch. Yeah. There we go. Just get all this dust off this side. Keep turning your rag because this is just sprayed over compound. Don't let that dry on there because that's a nightmare to get off. So keep turning your rag. And then all this oil, oiliness 
will come off. There we go. There we go. Hang on, what's this on here I noticed? Ah, just a bit of compound I didn't take off. So there we have it. There is a machine polished bonnet. And don't that look so much better than at the start of the video? Because if you come in close now, you can't see any rubbish, no rimples. There's dust starting to lie on the car already. And a fly, there we go. See, nothing. There we go. This is a machine polished bonnet. Anyhow, there you go. That's how you machine polish. I will put the video back on once I've done the G10 and the hand glaze. Then you can have a final look. So guys, we have been over the bonnet with G10. Here is some hand glaze on a new moffet on the side. We'll just flip over up with it. As you can see, we're three masks as well. Let's just put some on the other side. One more little job to do.
Where's the barnet pole? You're all waiting for this, aren't you? <laughs> Here we go. over the wing a little bit as well. There we go guys. One machine polished car. Once the car is washed and cleaned, and it'll look lovely. Cast your eye over that bonnet. That's the bit we're looking at. That's the bit we're painted. Bonnet and then wings. Look at that. Excellent. Anyhow, there we go. Now you've seen the full process. You've seen me primer, you've seen me base coat it, you've seen me lacquer it, you've seen me unmask it, and now you've seen me polish it. And that's what we're left with. That is a better, fa better finish than when that left the Vauxhall factory, I guarantee it. That bonnet is gonna put the paint on the rest of the car to shame, but there we go. I'd rather have it better than factory than not as good just have a look at the factory paint on the wing for a bit of comparison you can't really see can you i mean i have just give this wing a polish but it's not as crisp if you look at the reflection on the wing it's not as crisp as what's on that bonnet there we go anyhow customers should be over the moon with that excellent stuff and I'm going to go and I will see you next time. So, that's it. Vauxhall Astra, bonnet paint, start to finish. Total time, that's took me about four days with dry, drying time. But, we got a top quality job. Right, I'm off. See you next time. Bye bye for now. Ha <laughs> ha!